Hmm. Maybe the issue's here. Oh, hey guys. How's everyone doing? Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Ashley Narcisse. I'm an engineer at Apollo GraphQL, and I work with an awesome team of individuals that are building tools to help you developers make data more accessible. Now, speaking of information accessibility, I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered what's really happening in production? Like, especially for your GraphQL services? I don't know about you, but I certainly have. It's something that I couldn't shake for a long time. The fact that GraphQL oftentimes felt like a black box. At least until I discovered a lot of the toolings that are in Apollo Studio, and that really, really, really helped me start to paint a better picture of all the different aspects of your graph. Now, there are a lot of features in Apollo Studios that I won't go within, but it's one feature that I will go into. So, I lied. <laughs> GraphQL comes with a tracing spec that by this little nifty configuration right here, you can ship that information over into Apollo Studio. Now, this was really the starting point of saying, wow, all right, cool. I'm starting to understand what's happening. <laughs> I no longer have this like black box imagination that it just works and can't really paint a picture as to the sheer breadth of different operations and the concentrations of what data my clients are requesting. We're gonna dive into how to tool our Apollo server with whoa, open whoa, tracing. Whoa. You're not just gonna skip off that observability part, right? I know you. I mean, like, I feel like they can kind of like Google the definition for it. Nah, man, <laughs> they can't just Google that. Yeah, you're right. Don't worry, I got it. Observability is a term borrowed from mechanical engineer or control theory and it pretty much boils down to, can you understand what's happening inside your system or any particular state that it can arrive to? A lot of APMs out there describe observability as having three pillars, logs, metrics, and tracing. And while the first two do fall kind of the category of things that you can predict, you can describe them as known unknowns, right? Things that you know can potentially go wrong. But tracing is getting a bit closer Observability boils down to really getting all the right data at the right level of abstractions to get the right context as a request that occurs to your system propagates throughout your entire infrastructure. Observability can really be boiled down to understanding the unknown unknowns. I appreciate you, you know that? My dog. Now, Open Tracing is a spec published by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, which is a way to help provide a vendor not agnostic format of creating this tracing data. Now it works really well. Re what really? Ah, really really. <laughs> it works really really well with uh, distributed systems and microservices, which is one of the things that GraphQL also does a really really good job of helping abstract for our end clients. This is perfect, and here's why: we're able to go beyond the GraphQL tracing spec and convert over to a vendor agnostic format while also enriching the information that is being published from our GraphQL servers. And if you have any providers that already supports open tracing, it's plug and play. It's demo time, let's go. So we're starting off with an initialized instance of Jaeger uh, client and we're going to pull in some of our open tracing uh, tooling to initialize the, that tracer as the global tracer for our system. We're also going to export that so we can use it as area of our code. So here we have an instance of Apollo server, particularly this implementation is on Vercel on the serverless. Um, but we're going to go ahead and import the dependencies that we'll need to wire this up. Primarily Apollo Open Tracing is the notable uh, package that we're using. And we're also going to pull in the tracer that we initialize in the tracer file. When initializing the open tracer and adding it to the plugins uh, array in the configuration, uh, it requires a minimum of two properties, which are the server tree and the local. Both of these uh, take tracer objects, which is what we're going to pass along to it. At that point, we have a feature parity uh, with the same GraphQL tracer that we also can leverage in Apollo 
uh, studio, but we're going to expand on this information by larger on field resolve to to further instrument um, other layers of our code. So we're gonna hop into Jaeger and execute a search so we can pull up our tracing. We can go to the requests that we see and here are the traces for that render mutation that was executed. If we expand the details view for this trace and read the tags a little bit better, we'll see that there are the spans that are tracking the render, which is the field resolution, as well as the outbound IO to this localhost API that I have uh, also running on my machine. We're just beginning to scratch the surface on this, but I do hope that this talk has given you a few leads on how you can improve the insights that you're obtaining from your systems, while also to help continue the conversation forward. The code for this demo will be available at this URL right here, and you can also reach out to me on Twitter. And on that note, thank you, stay safe, and I'm sending good vibes your way.